Hi guys, um, today we're going to see how uh, one can use linear algebra to describe graphs and networks. In particular, we'll do the following problem. We're given this very simple graph here with five nodes and six edges. We've already labeled them and we've put directions on the edges. And we are asked to write down the incidence matrix A and then to compute its kernel and the kernel of A transpose and finally, we're asked to compute the trace of A transpose A. I'll give you a few moments to uh, try the pro problem on your own, and then you'll see my take on it. Hello again. OK, so let's first recall what an instance matrix A is. So an instance matrix is supposed to encode how the nodes connect to the edges. Um, in particular, it, it has as many rows as there are edges and as many columns as there are nodes. And um, we fill in, uh, we're going to fill, fill in the rows. Um, and we, we'll fill them uh, out as follows. So uh, we're going to use only negative 1, 1, and 0. And we're going to put a negative 1 um, in entry i and 1 in entry j if the edge, if the corresponding edge, connects node i to node j. OK, let me just do it concretely. So uh, let's look at uh, edge number 1. So it corresponds to the first row. It connects 1 to 2. So we have a negative 1 and a 1. Um, then edge um, number 2, it connects node 2 to 3. So negative 1, 1. Uh, edge number 3 connects uh, node 1 to 3. So negative 1, 1. And I believe you get the picture, right? So I'm just going to fill out the rest, rest of the entries. Um, right, 4 is uh, negative 2, um, negative 1, 1. 5 is uh, negative 2, well. Well, negative one, one here, and six is uh, one and one. Okay, so we've we've constructed the matrix A. Now we'll compute it, its null space, and we're going to do it without performing any row operations whatsoever. So. In order to do this, it, it's helpful to look at the graph as an electric circuit um, and uh, to assign to, every, to each of the nodes an electric potential. If we collect all the electric potentials um, in a vector x, then a times x is a vector who, with as many entries as there are edges and gives precisely the um, potential differences across the edges of the graph. OK, so then if Ax is to be 0, this means that across the graph, like across all the edges of the graph, all potential differences are 0. Therefore, all the potentials um, at, at each, yeah, at all the nodes needs to be equal, need to be equal to a constant number. So um, therefore, we conclude that the null space of A is spanned by constant 1. OK. There are five ones here corresponding to the five nodes. Now, what about the null space of A transpose? Adopt this, this analogy with electric uh, circuits, but this time we're going to look at currents flowing um, across the edges of the graph. So, uh, oh, and with, we're going to adopt the following convention for the currents. So, a current is going to be positive if it's, um, if it's if it flows in the direction of the edge, and negative if it flows in the opposite direction. 
Right. So then what is A transpose Y, where Y is a vector with um, which, which each of um, whose entry is a current uh, on the edge. Well, it's precisely um, the entries of A transpose Y are precisely um, equal to the total current flowing through each of the nodes of the graph. So uh, A transpose Y being equal to zero means that there is a balance in the circuit that um, the currents that flow through into each node equal the current currents that flow out of it. Right. Um, and it's fairly easy to find such configuration um, as of currents um, that, like, that satisfy this, this, ba like this balance equation. Um, we do it by flowing uh, around loops of the graph. So you see, this, this graph has three loops. Um, the first one is this triangle up there. The second one is the square. And I'm just, um, by this, this curled uh, direction, I'm signifying which, in which way I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to trace the loop. And there is a third loop is um, along the outer contour of the graph. But uh, in fact, the third one can be thought of as a superposition of um, these two, and I'll, I'll explain why in a second. So let's, let's figure out um, yeah, the configuration of, of currents that, that balance these loops. So if we flow a current um, one from one to two, and then flow a current of one along uh, edge two from two to three, and then we flow a current of negative one, mind that the direction is opposite to the direction of the loop, then we're going to have um, a balanced configuration of currents. So um, let me write this down. The following configuration. So one along edge one, one along edge two, and negative one along edge 3, and the rest 0, is a solution to A transpose Y. Let's see what um, solution we get by flowing around the loop in the square. Well, we get um, a 1 along, we flow a, a current of 1 along edge 4. Uh, current of 1 along edge 5, current of 1 along edge 6, and current of negative 1 along edge 2. So let's be careful. So there was 0, then along edge 2 was negative 1, uh, along 3 0, along 4 1, along 5 1, along 6 1. Now we can do the same thing with the, the big loop and produce um, a vector corresponding to it. And I, I, I prompt you to do it. But what you'll see is that um, the vector that you get is precisely a sum of these two vectors. It's a superposition of, in a way, the big loop is a superposition of the small loops. OK, so we figured out what the null space of H transpose is. And now let's um, concentrate our attention on finding the trace of A transpose A. I'm going to do it right here. So the trace of a matrix is the sum of its diagonal entries. And, let's, um, and we've seen this many times already, um, that the diagonal, entry of, the diagonal entries of A transpose A are precisely the magnitude squared of the columns of A. OK? So the 1, 1 entry is the magnitude squared of the first column, 
the 2, 2 entry is the magnitude squared of the second column, and so on. Now, what is the magnitude squared of a column of an incidence matrix? Well, each column of the incidence matrix is either, well, sorry, each entry in a column of an incidence matrix is either 1, negative 1, or 0. So when we square these entries, we get 1s or zeros. And we add them, when we add them up, we get precisely a number which is the non-trivial entries um, in the column. Okay, So the magnitude squared of the column is the number of non-trivial entries in it. But if we go back to the matrix A and we count the number of um, non-zero non, non entries, these are this, this is precisely the number of edges that connect with the node. OK, so the number of edges that connects with each node is called the degree of the node. In this way, trace of A transpose A will be just the sum of the degrees um, of the graph uh, in the picture. So we have um, one connects, uh, one, there are two edges connecting to one, so two plus two edges connecting to two plus two, uh, sorry, three edges connecting to two, three edges connecting to three, and I got a two for the number of edges connecting to four, and two for the number of edges connecting to five. So altogether, we have, we get 12. Right. So you see, we, in this problem, we computed um, certain linear algebra objects without performing the usual algebraic operations, but just by looking at, at the graph and seeing well, how the linear algebra is encoded in it. I hope it was somewhat illuminating. Uh, I'll see you next time.